Alright Star Brothers, I'm Viper and I'm Instinct and as you probably already noticed we're not here at the studio but we're here at the 50 meter range again for another very special video. Exactly because today we will be testing the performance between low budget AEGs all the way up to high budget AEGs. So before we dive into today's topic, make sure to subscribe and hit the bell button to keep notified of our weekly videos. Also don't forget to check out ReconBrothers.com for our quality monthly giveaways. Besides that, we're also working on our web shop for quality tactical goods for all you operators out there. So now that we've told that, let's go into today's topic. So as said, today we will be testing the performance of different budgets of AEGs. Now, what is an AEG? Well, an AEG is an automatic electric gun. How does it work? Well, it's actually a battery that powers a motor. The motor winds some gears and the gears move a piston that creates airflow for the BB to travel along the barrel. Now, that said, let's go to our first gun. So the first gun we have here today is the Lancer Tactical 02CLG2. Now this is a low budget AEG or a entry level gun and comes around 150 euros. It is based on the old school gearbox we all know well about and it doesn't feature any sort of recoil or bolt catch. So that said, let's go over to the second one. So the second gun we have here today is the GNG CM16 SRL. This gun is considered to be a mid-range AEG and comes around 270 euros. Now it also features the old school gearbox and it doesn't provide any sort of recoil or bolt catch. So let's go to the third one. As for the third gun today, we have the Tokyo Marui HK416 Delta Custom Next Gen AEG. Now, this gun is a high range AEG which comes around 650 euros. It features a uh, tweed gearbox to offer recoil, which is not that strong, but it also has a bolt catch to indicate when your magazine is empty. So, let's get over to the fourth gun. As for our fourth gun today, we have the Systema PTW which comes around 1700 euros. Now, this one works quite a bit different than the other ones we've already shown you because this one has an external piston that moves on uh, gears that sit inside the lower receiver. Now, this one doesn't feature any sort of recoil, but it does feature a bolt catch. Now, that said, let's go over to our last gun. Now the last AG for today is the DAS GBLS, which comes around 1600 euros just for a basic kit. Now this one also has an external piston that moves on gears, just like the Sistema does, but what truly makes this a different breed is the fact that this one has a functioning bolt. This means that it provides recoil that's almost comparable to a gas blowback rifle. It also features a bolt catch. Now all these AEGs are stock and in order to eliminate as much variables as possible they all have about the same barrel length as well as the same FPS output. That means that the Tokyo Marui needed a small spring, spring upgrade in order to reach that European FPS level. Now we would like to thank Airsoft Doctor for providing all these guns to make this video possible so thank you Doc. Anyway let's go over to my brother Instinct which will explain the testing. Now, to make this test as representative as possible, we as scientists like to eliminate as much variables as possible. For this reason, we decided to let Viper do shooting because one, his eyes are better, and two, he's the better shooter out of the two of us. Besides that, we have chosen to use this table as our stable platform, and Viper will be taking on a hold named the Sniper Hold. This is because it eliminates as much movement as possible. Now, let's open up the range. So, here we are outside at the 50 meter range on which we'll do our first test. Now an important thing to notice is that we have barely any wind which is also a factor we wanted to remove. Now for our first test we are going to determine the maximum effective range of all the mentioned AG types. Now what do we mean by that? 
Well, the maximum effective range is the farthest straight trajectory on which we can consistently hit a target. So, for this we have the steel target hanging here, which is perfect to indicate whether we hit it or not. Now, for our first test, we will put the target at the back end of our range, which is 50 meters, and then we will put it closer until we can hit the target five times in a row. Once that's done, we're going to use the range finder to indicate how far the target is standing at. Now, let's get to it. Remember, eyes and ears. Oh no, no ears. But I always wanted to say that. Well, apparently the Sistema and the DAS don't come with any sort of optics, so we took the iron sights of the Tokyo Marui and uh, put it on these to have some sort of reference at least. So now that we have the maximum effective ranges of our guns from test number one, we can go over to test number two, the precision test. Here we are going to measure the precision of each gun on its maximum effective range. For this we replace the steel target by a car target, which will allow us to collect data afterwards. So now that we have collected our data from test number 2, we can easily see that the GNG has the shortest maximum effective range at 28 meters. So that's where our target is standing at 28 meters away from the shooter. Now for test number 3, we're going to use all of the other guns to see what their position is at the same distance so we can compare them to each other. So now that we've collected our data, we can go over back to the studio and analyze it. But first, let's have some fun. So after our little relief, we'll go over to checking out the results of the data we've collected on the range. From our first test, we can clearly see a big difference in effective ranges when it comes to these AEGs. The worst performer was the GNG with 28 meters and after that the Lancer performed a bit better with 30 meters. So it's safe to say they have about the same effective range of about 30 meters. 
The next two that performed a bit better were the DAS GBLS with 34 meters and the Tokyo Marui NGRS with 35 meters. Also these perform about the same when it comes to the effective range which is 5 meters in difference or 17% better than the GNG and the Lancer Tactical do. That being said, the one that has by far beaten them all was the Systema PTW with 39 meters or 30% difference compared to the 30 meters of the GNG and the Lancer Tactical. Now, we know you can hit people farther away with an airsoft gun than 40 meters, but then you're either over hopping, aiming higher up in the air or can't hit your target with each and every single shot. So, then you're more spraying and praying rather than shooting at the gun's effective range. So, that's it. From test 2, we can see that the Sistema PTW has a smaller grouping besides having a bigger range compared to the Tokyo Marui. And that's why some people want to spend a big amount of money on a Sistema. Then, as for our third test and last test, where we compared them all at the worst effective range, we can clearly see a difference in precision or grouping between all of the guns. Let's first begin with the GNG and the Lancer Tactical that showed about the same effective range from test number 1. Although the Lancer had 2 more meters in effective distance, the GNG had about 65% less spread than the Lancer Tactical, which is a huge difference and that is exactly one of the reasons, besides more quality materials, why you pay more for a mid-range AG like the GNG. The difference in grouping comes from the GNG having a more refined hop-up unit than the Lancer Tactical does. Now, as for the Tokyo Marui NGRS and the DAS GBLS, which also performed about the same in range, differ quite a lot when it comes to grouping. To be more precise, the Tokyo Marui was about 21% better at its precision than the DAS GBLS was. This obviously has to do because of the stronger recoil the DAS provides compared to the Tokyo Marui. Furthermore, when we take a look at the Sistema PTW, we see that its grouping is fairly close to the one from Tokyo Marui, which only differs about 6%. If we compare the Sistema to the best performer at 28 meters, which is a GNG, it still differs 15% in grouping. Now, if we would go under the hood of these machines, we can explain a few of the things we've concluded from our tests. The explanation can be found with how the inner barrel, hop-up, magazine and the air nozzle of the piston are built. For this, the regular old-school gearbox AEGs require a freedom of movement from the inner barrel and hop-up in order to insert and fit a magazine. But the more freedom a barrel has, the more the air from the air nozzle hits the BB on another spot and the less consistent the hop-up will create the hop-up effect. This translates itself in less effective range and less precision with each shot. Now, Tokyo Marui has solved these issues by building an inner barrel system that provides less freedom and a longer air nozzle to make the air hit the BB in a more precise way with each shot and that's why we see a better effective range and a better grouping as well. Now, as for why the Sistema PTW outperformed all of the rest has to do with it being designed for the purpose of being very precise. How did they do that? Well, the hop-up, barrel and entire piston lock shut inside the upper receiver to minimize any possible movements. And also the fact that the Sistema doesn't provide any sort of recoil only helps in it being more precise. As for the DAS GBLS, you can compare its whole system as a hybrid between a Sistema PTW and a GBR or gas blowback rifle. So it also locks shut like a Sistema does, only thing is that its heavy recoil widens your grouping like seen from our data. Now, you could say, what about an upgraded low budget or mid range AAG, how will that perform? Well, the fact is, you can put all your money into it to make it perform better, which it will, but it will never perform equally as good or better than the other systems. This is because their build is inherently different compared to the higher ranged AAGs. And as long as you have that freedom of your inner barrel and hop up, you will never shoot any better with these airsoft guns. So, our conclusion from these tests is quite simple. A mid-range AAG like the GNG is something we recommend as an ideal starter gun. The Sistema PTW is the best performer when it comes to range and grouping, because it doesn't provide any recoil and barrel freedom, but you have to be willing to pay for it. A high range AAG like the Tokyo Marui NGRS is the overall best system for its price performance and the realism it offers. And the DAS GBLS is the best AAG that provides realism on the market but the recoil costs precision and it comes with a big price tag like the Sistema does. So guys, let us know in the comments what sort of gun you personally prefer to shoot with and why. 
Again, we thank you for watching. Hopefully you learned something from this video. Don't forget to like this video and subscribe to our channel. Visit freakandbrothers.com once in a while and we'll see you next week for our next video.